Hello everyone, this is Juan from Salmonella Place and today we're going to talk about enzymes. Well, you have probably heard tons of times uh, this word, enzymes, in your biology class, but what I can tell you right now is that these are proteins. So enzymes are proteins. Sometimes you can hear about RNA molecules that perform enzymatic functions and these are called ribozymes. If you want to learn more about ribozymes, I suggest you look into the RNA tutorial that we have here on Salmonella Place. Now that I told you that enzymes are proteins, but what is the main function of enzymes? Why do we need them? Well, living organisms, organisms sorry, have tons of reactions happening in them including ourselves. We have lots of similar reactions like the one that you see here, reactants A plus B forming products A, B, or in other formats. You see tons of different types of reactions going on in your body. But if these reactions were happening just based on the energy uh, available in the environment and in these uh, molecules, then they would go in a very slow pace, very slow rate. So evolution was able to create these amazing molecules known as enzymes, and they're able to speed up that rate of the reaction. So if you add an enzyme right here, then this reaction will happen even a million fold faster. So that's how important enzymes are in your bodies. And I have here a drawing here that shows two enzymes, or one enzyme, because this is the same drawing showing here, that if I add an enzyme here, this will speed up this reaction right here that you can see. So this is just to show you that it's the same thing. So this is the basic importance of enzymes in your body. Another important thing that I would like to add, just for your information, every time you hear a word that ends with ACE, this is an enzyme. So any word with A's ending is an enzyme. Now I would like to give you a few words on characteristics of enzymes. So as I mentioned before, they're able to increase rates of chemical reactions, very important function characteristic of enzymes. So therefore we can also call them biocatalysts. So they are able to improve um, catalysis or rates of reactions. Now one thing that happens though is that this increase in the rate of reactions is done without the enzyme being consumed. So if we introduce an enzyme in a reaction to speed it up, the there will be no change in the number of enzymes. So if we start with a hundred enzymes in the beginning, we will end with another 100 enzymes, so they are not consumed. Another point that is important to mention is that they will also increase the rates of chemical reactions without altering, very important, the chemical equilibrium between reactants and products, as you see here. Very important point. Now, one thing that I want to also mention here is from now on, when we talk about reactants, these, these ones that you see here, the A plus B. So reactants from now on, we'll call it substrate. So substrate is going to be the reactants, the name attributed to reactants when we talk about enzymes. So there are still a few characteristics that I would like to go over before we move into a little bit more detail on enzymes, how they work. Now the first characteristic is that enzymes catalyze reactions both forward and backward. And in this image here, you can see they're catalyzing the reaction forward, but there are other enzymes, it might be another one, that will help catalyze this reaction in this rea uh, direction, backwards, which would convert this product here, AB, into two separate products, A plus B. 
The second characteristic is that enzymes or the substrate binds to an active site. So there is a place in enzymes, as you can see here in our image. This is called an active site. And this is where the magic will happen because this is where these, the substrate right here will bind and then where the enzymes are able to help speed the reaction in this direction. And then the substrate will be, will form a product and be released from the active site. An important thing to know though is that enzymes are specific. So enzymes like to just have one type of substrate. So there will be tons of enzymes in your body because they're usually only function or help in one type of um, reaction or with one type of substrate. Now, the third thing that I would like to mention is that they bind through H bonds. This is the way they, they bind, the substrate will bind here on this active site. It can be done through H bonds, hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and also some hydrophobic interactions. So I told you before that enzymes are able to speed up or increase the rate of a reaction, but we have to know how they do it. And I have a graph here that illustrates greatly how this is done, and we have to go over it. What you see here is energy. So this is energy of a reaction versus time. So this is what we are comparing here. And you see here a curve. This is a curve of a reaction, of the energy in a reaction. And you see that we have here our product, uh, reactant, sorry, or substrate and our products here at the end as we've seen in a previous in the previous slides now what i need to also tell you here is this increase this sudden increase here of energy this is known as activation energy i'm going to write it as ea this is activation energy what is activation energy say if i have a ball here if I need to push it up so it can go downhill, then the energy that I would use, let's say, to push this ball to the top so it can then roll naturally downhill, this is the activation energy. So in other words, this is the energy that I will need to push the reaction or to start the reaction. So this is activation energy. Now what enzymes do, and first thing that I need to tell you is this reaction here is not using a enzyme, so it's non-catalyzed reaction. And what enzymes do, say I introduce an enzyme in this reaction here, the curve then would change and look a little bit like this. So it would mean that the activation energy will be lowered. So I need less energy for my reaction to happen. And this is what enzymes do. They reduce that uh, activation energy and therefore my reaction can then proceed easily, let's say, uh, from reactants or to products. Uh, that's what enzymes are able to do. So what I want to talk about now is what happens in the active sites of enzymes. As I mentioned before, the active site is where the substrate will bind to and where enzymes will be able to help in speeding up the reaction. Now, one thing important to mention is that active sites are usually very small, even though in this, these images that I have here, they seem much bigger, but active sites are usually between six to 10 amino acids. And as you know, enzymes are proteins, therefore they're comprised of uh, hundreds or even thousands of amino acids. Now, I have three illustrations here that show the three types uh, of events that will happen in the active sites of enzymes. The first one 
uh, as you see here, substrates are usually hanging around in the cell cytoplasm, for example, and they're colliding and they're or unorganized. And what enzymes are able to do then is they're able to orient them. So when the substrates bind to the enzymes uh, active site through the amino acids here, then they're form they're oriented in such way and facilitate the bonds between the substrates, for example. The second thing, second event that will happen in active sites of proteins is the, uh, the amino acids in the active sites are able to either, uh, add charges. So they're able to add charges either electrons, adding electrons or taking out electrons, or adding protons or taking out protons. Uh, and this will help in the reaction as well. Now the third thing that active sites are able to do, they're able to induce strain. And how do they induce strain? Well, once a substrate has bound to the active site, as you see here, what will happen is then the enzyme can cause bonds of the substrate to stretch. And this will definitely put uh, this substrate here in an unstable transition state, which will help further in the reaction. One lesson to take home is that substrate is specific to the active site of the enzyme. That's very true, but there are two things that you need to learn, two different models that explain how substrates fit into active sites of enzymes. And I'm separating here because there are two different models that we know of today. The first one is lock and key. And as the name indicates, the substrate fits perfectly into the active site like a key fits into a lock. And this is what you see here. This is the lock and key fit. The other type of models, of fit models that we know, or other types of fits, is the induced fit. And the induced fit, as you can see here, the substrate is very different, or the shape of the substrate is very different from the shape of the active site on the enzyme. But this enzyme is specific to this substrate. So it will find a way, it will be induced by the substrate to fit uh, the substrate into its active site and allow the reaction to happen, as you can see here. So there is an induced fit. And this is very important because in some cases there is this enzyme known as exokinase, one example, that is able to, or that uses this model, this induced fit model, to attract the substrate and fit it, it into the active site. And once the enzymes are able to fit the substrate in such manner, it can even protect it, let's say, from other chemicals and substances in the environment, such as water, which would interfere in the reaction. So this is a very interesting way that enzymes found to help in reactions. Thank you.